Hey everybody, welcome to episode 5 of the Muni Gov Guide GS Leadership Lunch and Learn event. I am your host Toby Soto. I am the blogger behind MuniGovGuide.com and I am also the GIS manager for the city of Riverside in California. My goal with these events are to take you from good to great with actionable content based on my experiences and my discussions with GIS professionals like yourself and industry experts. My thoughts and opinions are of my own and not of my employer. So lately I've noticed on the social media a lot of chatter about looking for qualified GIS consultants. I thought that that would be a great topic to discuss on our live event today. So there are a few reasons for actually hiring a GIS consultant. Um, some of them may be if you have a, a large project or uh, where that, that you need some expertise in and, and some help to help accomplish. Uh, maybe you have a data conversion or mapping service that uh, is required um, within your organization that you need support on. Or maybe you awarded a grant and you need support to help implement whatever project you identified in that grant. Maybe you are a result of the economic downsizing and you need staff to help maintain data or maintain an interface that you have uh, within your, your system. And lastly, maybe you need to upgrade your GIS platform or a system. GIS consultants are great in handling those types of cases to um, um, get you through those projects. Uh, there are quite a few qualified consultants out there and uh, I'm here to help you to try to determine a better way to um, um, discern a, a GS consultant that will fit your need. Uh, so the first one, I'm going to go through top five considerations for hiring a GS consultant. And so the first one is definitely based around expertise. Uh, are, is there experience based around the scope of your project? Uh, do they have your business knowledge? And um, are they able to take your assessment needs and convert that to actionable uh, solutions to help you um, get through those uh, those uh, project scopes. Also, do they have technical technical expertise in house? Uh, their staff should have a solid foundation in information systems and information services. Uh, their staff should also have a, a depth and and diversified technical skill sets because as you know with GIS we're dealing with uh, operating systems, web platforms, GIS platforms, databases, networking, cybersecurity. We definitely, uh, you need someone to be able to address many of those different areas. Uh, do they use subcontractors? Some GIS consultants maybe have an expertise in one particular area, but not in the whole breadth of the scope of the project, so they may use subcontractors. Find out what they subcontract out and if they use offshore vendors. Um, that, especially when it comes to data conversion, uh, you want to know if they're, they're using offshore. Also gather a list of their subcontractors. You definitely want to know who they are using uh, so that when you actually are in a project with them that they're using who they identified as their subcontractors. So check their references. That's the third one. You definitely want to make sure that their references are related to your project scope. Uh, consult their previous clients. Uh, do site visits to their clients. Even do a site visit to the consulting firm, to their office. Uh, when you're doing site visits, check to see what, what resulting product or solution the, the consultant provided and, and also what documentation as well. Do a peer review. Find out from other GIS um, managers and, and industry experts to find out how does this GIS consultant measure up. You know, in the last episode, we talked about uh, GIS uh, social networking. 
This is an exact reason to have that, to be able to network with other GIS professionals to find out how are these consultants? How do they work? Are they team oriented? Are they trustworthy? Uh, is this someone that I really, really want to use within my organization? Number four is the communication. Uh, do they communicate well? Um, are they able to adjust their technical conversation based on the audience? Are they able to uh, speak to the technical staff and the terms that they need in order to do, to do their job? And can they talk to executives to be um, uh, not as technical and be able to speak in a language that uh, adheres to their business terms and their needs? Um, do they listen more than they talk? Uh, that's pretty uh, important. Uh, you got to be able to listen in order to provide a solution. Uh, are they responsive? Definitely need to know that uh, whenever you put a question out there that they're going to quickly turn around and give you a response. And do they have a communication plan once they're into some sort of project? Um, you know how it is when you're in projects, things change. Uh, there's different uh, criteria or requirements that may come into the project and you need to be able to communicate with them. How do they track that? How do they track their change orders? How do they track uh, emails and requirements and uh, resolutions? So definitely you need to know those things going into uh, hiring a GIS con uh, con consultant. <laughs> Um, are they available for site visits, uh, for meetings, and for council meetings, or provide technical assistance, or are they just purely a remote in type consultant? That's another area that uh, definitely should be discussed prior to hiring any GIS consultant. Uh, what is their documentation practice? Are they documenting all of their solutions? Are they uh, able to provide you system requirements, things of that nature you want to have in-house because once the consultant leaves, it's up to you to maintain that application or that workflow process. Lastly would be the cost. They should be able to provide you a fairly accurate cost in uh, whatever project you may have if they have expertise in that because if they've done it enough times they pretty much know how much effort would go into uh, whatever solution you're looking into and provide you some fairly quickly uh, cost and, and numbers in, in that estimate. Um, does the value uh, and service provide match your budget? Are they uh, giving you this pie in the sky uh, and then you don't really have the budget to match that? They should be able to match whatever services they're providing you to your to your budgetary amounts and you should be able to identify what values you're going to get out of that. Um, be aware of low ballers. Uh, usually what ends up happening with with the low ballers is you end up coming back with a lot of change orders and then that's what usually ramps up the cost in uh, hiring GIS consultants. So those were just my quick top five uh, considerations when hiring a GS consultant. I hope this was beneficial to you. I really enjoy doing this and I really appreciate the time you take to hear me out. Uh, you can catch these Lunch and Learn events every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And if you want to learn more about GIS management and leadership, go to www.munigov.com. And if you have a comment, please leave it below. I'd love to uh, uh, interact with you guys as much as possible and you guys have a great day and I will see you next week. Take care.